The next speaker is Arvind Need Kumar. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker, I rise to make a few comments on the motion restoration of zero rated items in the value added tax amendment of schedules order number 18 of 2016. It's a motion in the name of the Honorable Gail Teixeira, Opposition Chief Whip. Mr. Speaker, it cannot be denied that the imposition of these amendments will have an unfavorable effect on the people of Guyana and our economy. Mr. Speaker, what is exempt and what is zero rated? This seems to be nothing else but control freakism. This is what we call control freakism. Yeah, yeah. And it is not surprising that we see those control freakism people are not small C's, but they are looking to liquidate themselves now. Mr. Speaker, rice production drop, sugar production drop, bauxite production drop, and there's gr gross mis mismanagement at the gold board. As a result, we see tax and more tax. Tax and more tax. Production and productivity cannot be stimulated under the coalition government. They are falling apart. Only, only last week, we saw the Honorable Prime Minister disagreeing with the Attorney General. And we, when we look at the fight that is going on in the, in the, with the Attorney General and different people, it tells us a story. Mr. Speaker, in making my contributions to the debate on this motion, I will start by addressing the issue of the increased cost for a person required to pay for the issuance of certificate conforming their tax identification number, the TIN. It is of note that in accordance with the proposed amendment of section 60A, subsection 6A and B, applicants reapplying for a TIN certificate would have to pay Guyana $5,000. Mr. Speaker, there is much that is fundamentally and conceptually wrong with these draconian impositions. First, it must be recognized that through these changes, this consciousless, consciousless coalition government will be asking the unemployed to pay a tax, which would be taxed. While it is of note that this will mostly impact on the youths, yes, the youths in our citizenry, the registration of a person is indeed a function related to the record keeping structure in the GRAs or government automated system. Why is it then that potential taxpayers, our youths, our greatest assets, have to pay or foot the bill for this function? In addition, the cost for a certificate is $1,000 on first application. It means that the taxpayer's information should be in GRA's records in cases where a reprint is requested and no real processing of data would be required. Hence, why $5,000? Does this certificate cost this much? If so, what are the security features in this document and why are regular responsible businesses refusing to accept some photo ID documents issued by the GRE such as driver license, which is cheaper and ought to have security features. Why? Mr. Speaker, in most cases, outside of employment, where person require a first-time registration or reprint is related to the setting up of bank transaction or to pay GRA taxes for imported goods, the reprint fee suggests that persons are penalized for inadvertence Hence, the minister must justify the cost of each certificate, especially when the information should have already been recorded in an automated system that a GRA or other government agencies. It is observed that the bill have no provisions for exceptions, so I wish to ask the Honorable Minister of Finance 
What happens in cases where persons suffer from the unfortunate situations due to circumstances beyond their direct control, such as floods, fire, not to mention this significant increase in thefts and burglary, in which more than 10 certificates are taken away. Mr. Speaker, I wish to state my strongest objections to and request a categorical withdrawal of these fees, which are not well thought out, impartially harsh, and undeserved additional burden on the Guyanese people. Point of order, um, standing order 40A. Mr. Speaker, I think we are missing the boat, quite frankly. I thought the motion is dealing with Schedules 1 and Schedule 2 of the VAT Act. But what we're listening here now is thin certificates and all other things. Perhaps we could, you could guide us as to whether we're on the right track here or whether we've gone off track. I thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Member, Mr. Kumar. You've already explained the. Mr. Speaker, I'm Minister speaking. Mr. Finance. Yes, Honorable Member. Mr. Speaker, I'm speaking on all this burden that the, the uh, Guyanese people have to get with tax and more tax. I was giving a specific issue. I remember for. it is possible that. What you, are, what you want to do may be done on another occasion, but now we are speaking about on a motion. And that motion, if I may remind the honorable member, is for the restoration of zero rated items in the value added tax, order number 18. That is what the, the, the motion before the house is. So please be guided and tailor your response accordingly. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am very firm in support of the Honorable Member, Madam Gator Shira, in respect that we should restore zero-rated zero tax. And if you listen to the Honorable Mr. Sharma, what he said just now, when he was making his presentation, I noticed that his colleagues even who are sitting next to him were laughing. Mr. Speaker, are we, are this coalition government going to put into the hands price control? Are they prepared to do that when he said that the business people must be more responsible? I want to ask him what will happen to that announcement to see it gone up already? Simple things as that, everything gone up. And it was Mr. Speaker, it was Mr. Sharma who said. The Honorable Member, he said that the people start charging the higher price already. From the time the budget came out, people did not wait for the, for the new year or anything. The only price has gone up. Why it gone up? It's because this is natural. This is Guyana. We cannot, the, the coalition government cannot put our people in the hands of the business community. Mr. Speaker, if you want to talk about poverty, you must say that the Milko will now, now have to pay millions of dollars in tax, more. The Milko will have to pay 14% more on electricity. The Milko will have to pay 40% more on water rates, which means that the roti and bread that the poor man got to eat, the price got to go up. The price got to go up for it. Who will control that? The coalition government will control it? It's, it's, it's really ridiculous when we look at what they're trying to say, that they put the 40% now on everything. Everything they put at the 40%. I want to say, what do we feel in respect to sports gears and equipment? 40% on water means that we can not close down the pool at Lillian Dahl. 40% means you're going to close it down. 40% means that you can't use this portal, you will not get electricity. And already, and already we see that the price for rental has gone up ex uh, very high, extensively. And this means that our sportsmen and sportswomen, the sport, the sport fraternity, I want to know what, is the, what the people, what the Honorable Minister of Tourism will do when, when, we, when we check carefully with this 14% tax that has gone up. 
Mr. Speaker, it is my honest belief that the people in our country must benefit from the zero-rated zero tax. They must benefit from it. We had given it, the PP Civic had given it to them, and we feel very strong that this imposition is we're going to tax more and more. The producers will have to pay more to produce their goods. And it is natural, if you, pay, if you have to pay more for producer goods, that you will have to charge more. And I'm looking to see whether they're going to bring price control on the businessmen, because I understand that is the next way they're going to go to, to control price. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge that, we, that this House support the motion moved by the Honorable Gate Teixeira. And we must stop taxing, taxing to pay the fat cats over their money. The fat cats must work for their money. They must not tra tax people for it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Honorable Member for his statement. Honorable Members, the time is now 10 minutes after 4 o'clock. We will take...